Hey guys, what's up? Pixels here, and in today's video, I'm giving you my best build for Ruby on Evil Dead the game. So I've had roughly around 10 matches with the character. I've spent a little bit of time with her and trying to figure out what the best possible build is for her and what she should be specced around. And I think I've got one in mind. I think it's a really nice one. I've tested out quite a lot. And honestly, she almost feels like unkillable at this point because it's pretty broken. And she is actually a broken character. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets nerfed um, like a week or so after I've done this video. But I thought I'd do a best build for her and, and sort of give, give the character a little breakdown because i know she'll be quite confusing to understand so uh, let's begin anyways i'm just going to break down the character a little bit so uh, as you can see reading this obviously any deadite that is killed within ruby's aura will collect a soul and that soul a counter will appear on the right side of your hood and so if you just pay attention to that you can collect up to 50 souls i believe um with pink fuck upgrades so uh, you can actually collect over seven, uh, up to 70 whilst you trigger the ability. So uh, if you trigger the ability, the ability like slowly consumes the souls, but it will regain souls as long as uh, evil units keep dying within the aura up to 70 souls. And then it'll create the blast as big as possible. And once you get that maxed out, uh, obviously the maximum charge is 70 there. And the maximum damage that you'll get from that is 800, which is quite a lot. And you also give 500 health to your team. So uh, it's a pretty nifty ability. Um, I, I tend not to use it because uh, there's only a certain way that you should be using it. And I think it's more or less when the support dies or if the support goes down, you have Ruby there as backup healing for the team, which is really nice. It also works pretty decently at book phase as well. Um, but you don't want to keep spamming this through, throughout the entire game. Uh, you can sort of do that, but you're going to be kind of limiting Ruby to her potential because if you look at her second perk, Soul Eater, the more souls she has collected, her aura will be buffed up. So if you have the maximum of 50 souls, then you'll have obviously the max stamina regeneration of 20% for the team. Uh, you'll have a max cooldown reduction uh, of 25%. And you'll have a maximum damage of 20% and a max damage reduction of 20% as well. So uh, Ruby actually gives four buffs to the team, which is pretty crazy from her aura. And like I said, she'll probably get nerfed from this. Um, so what I have found that the more souls I have, obviously this percentage number does go up to a maximum of 20% uh, through testing, of course. So uh, be wary of that. This is why I don't say use her active ability because you kind of just want to keep the souls stored. That way you've always got your aura maxed out on the buff as well. And then for her third perk, uh, Anathemia, <laughs> I struggle to say that word, but um, basically she has a resistant to possession at 10%, so she basically has a fear threshold almost at the full bar. And she costs a little bit extra energy uh, to possess compared to other survivors. And not only that, but she also takes less damage uh, from possession. And she'll also, if you're out of combat for roughly 20 seconds, her health will regenerate for 30% as well. Uh, I think this is actually bugged because I'm not sure how it's supposed to work, but um, I think if she's at 30% health, she's supposed to regenerate health or she's meant to regenerate only 30% of health. However, I have noticed that you can go from almost dying to max health. Um, so that's definitely bugged, I think. And also on the fourth perk is Quick Study. Um, basically, any kill with a weapon um, gives an extra damage of 1% as well. And that'll go up to a maximum of 20 as well. So uh, she's a pretty OP character. So uh, hopefully I broke down the character a little bit for you guys to understand a little bit. Uh, better because like i said she's quite a confusing one okay so let's move on to her best build so uh for me it's going through all the perks and obviously paying attention to what she does i instantly buffed up her aura range so the reason i did this is because if you have a bigger aura range obviously you're going to be more effective of collecting souls from the you know the deadites being killed by your teammates as well as by you so that way you can stack up your your souls much much quicker also if you use this it definitely does give you uh, the chance to maybe use the ability a little bit more frequently throughout the game as well because you will be collecting souls much faster too and the next one i go for is two points in awful dodger obviously if you get two points in awful dodger and you max out the stamina straight away which is what you should be doing on every character by the way on the game uh, you will get four dodges on leader uh, which is pretty broken to be honest and i'm not sure why they ever made this change previously a few months ago they did this uh i think it's a pretty broken um upgrade for a, a character especially like ruby uh to have four dodges and so i'm just going to put one point in industrial strength 
and I'll explain why just the one point. Um, we're going to max out Season Survivor to 13% on basic units. Obviously, you know, basic spam has always been the meta in this game. Uh, for Demon players, obviously, they like to use their basic units a lot. So, obviously, having damage reduction there against those possessed units always, like makes the most sense, you know. And then we're just going to put one point into stop and power. You can do a combination of melee and range with Ruby. So, having an extra 10% balance bar damage is definitely not bad at all. And, obviously, we're just going to put in three points in C stars and then we're going to put four points into devastating force uh, i primarily play ruby like a melee character then i swap to a little bit of ranged here and there if i need to uh, so range isn't my priority but melee is primarily because you know the more evil units you kill and obviously doing the iframes with the finishes and stuff will buff up her melee damage as well on top of that Okay, so with the last seven points on the skill tree, we're just going to put one in Deep Pockets Matchsticks because, you know, that's the most OP perk that you should be upgrading on leaders. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, we have to sadly spend three points into these to get to Tougher Than Hell to get that nice 10% damage reduction here. And the last point, we're just going to put one point into Season Survivor Elite. So the reason why I went for damage reduction over buffing up Industrial Strength, so... Basically, with Industrial Strength, if you buff this up, obviously, you would get up to 20% uh, maximum health. But that would require more healing from your support character. And with your ability here, if you do decide to use this, if you try and heal yourself with this ability, it's really, uh, it's not going to work as well if you have Industrial Strength maxed out. Primarily because it, only, it just does a flat 500 healing. So, uh, with the way Industrial Strength works... Um, with damage reduction is that the damage reduction gives you the extra health without requiring the extra healing if that makes sense so uh, <laughs> otherwise if you had industrial strength maxed out that would require more healing from your support characters callers so uh, this is why damage reduction is way more important on skill trees than industrial strength industrial strength is only really good for solo queue type of scenarios where you feel like you're going to be healing yourself a lot more um, but you know if you, you feel like you're playing with support characters a lot they're struggling to heal you it's, it's mainly something on warrior but uh, the fact we have this on a, a leader skill tree is definitely a bit different um, but what I have found is the support characters can heal me up much more if I don't have industrial strength maxed out. And it's more or less same goes for the pink fu fuck upgrades, but I will get into the details of the pink fuck upgrades on Ruby as well. Um, so this is why I primarily go for damage reduction. And obviously she has an aura for damage reduction as well. So uh, she gets a nice 20% there too. So just having all the damage reduction stacked obviously with Ruby. Uh, with tougher than hell so we basically go up to 20 percent health without the extra need for you know the extra the extra heal in there and obviously we're gonna have a nice you know 23 percent damage reduction on basic units being possessed and we're gonna have a, a flat 15 percent damage reduction there too and like i said combined with her aura it's gonna go up to an, an another 20 percent damage reduction so she can take a lot of damage with a combination of course of four dodges too it just makes her pretty much impossible oh well, i say impossible but uh, it, it has happened i have gone down as ruby on one occasion against a warlord um boss unit but that was my very first game playing her i didn't really understand what was happening uh with the character yet uh but yeah like i said she, she can be almost impossible to kill because with the four dodges with the damage reduction she just takes a lot of damage she can dodge a lot of damage and yeah and not only that but she can heal herself um with her abilities too so okay guys now i'm going to show you guys how to spend the pink fuck on ruby so uh i've done it in a different way to all my other videos because you know it's a bit harder to describe on how to spend it on her so the first thing that we go for is just maxing out stamina there the main thing you want to do that for is obviously getting the four dodges combined with awful dodger uh, so now obviously we can dodge four times with a character uh, which is really nice so uh, we do that, and then the next thing that you have to go for is melee. So you spend four points, and then at the fifth point, um, you will unlock aura down here. So the aura effect, um, basically, it'll buff your aura up, uh, so you unlock cooldown reduction. So after we've spent the point in the aura, it does lock again. So now we have to spend some more points in other categories. So we just max out melee there, and then we're going to put one point into health. So after you've maxed out melee and put another point into health, it will unlock the aura again. And this time you will get damage reduction on the aura as well. Uh, so then it will lock. So now we have damage reduction and cooldown unlocked, which is really nice. And then the next thing we're going to have to go for is 
obviously just maxing out health and then we're gonna put a point in fear and then it will unlock the aura again and like i said it's a bit weird how you have to spend them on um on ruby so this is why i had to show you guys on how it works uh but then at the end i just max out my fear there and then i just max out range i don't really go for range that much but yeah this has been my best build for ruby guys i hope you enjoy it i hope you have fun using this build as well she is an awesome character i think she's too broken to be in the game the way she is to be honest and i wouldn't be surprised if she gets nerfed very soon um so this best build might get a little bit outdated um but the thing is she is based around damage reduction and stuff so hopefully they don't change her too much but they definitely need to bring her down to the other leaders levels if i'm being honest and the reason why i didn't really go with like fast forward or aura buffs in her skill tree is because i think master influence is not really that effective on her you know she has 20 percent there um which is obviously going to multiply all her, her other effects but <clears throat> The reason why I think Master Influence works on the other leaders better is that the other leaders have an active ability that pretty much buffs their aura up, you know. So with El Jefe, obviously it's doing a finisher, it'll buff up his aura a lot more. And then with Lord Arthur, again, once he does his active ability, it'll buff up his aura more. And the same with Annie. Sadly, Ruby doesn't have something like that, so it's always just a maximum flat stat that can't be buffed up anymore. Um, so he'd be basically only getting four to five percent gains on those which to me is just not worth it on this character and like i said you're going to be hindering yourself if you're taking points away from devastating force or damage reduction and buff up this aura because it's just not worth it um but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the best build hope you tried out for yourselves and enjoy it i have a lot of fun with this build and i'm sure you guys will as well like button hit that sub button leave me a comment down below let me know what you guys think of the build and what you guys like to run on ruby as well and thank you guys so much for watching i've been picking so those are my awesome viewers. I'll catch you guys in the next one.